My kids don't need braces because they eat a lot of meat. Stay with me here, I'm gonna explain. I got back from the dentist with a huge sigh of relief a few months ago. He told me that all three of my kids don't need braces. And if I did want them, insurance wouldn't even cover them because they'd be considered cosmetic. Not only is this a relief because we get to avoid the every few week appointments to tighten and adjust braces, we also get to avoid an enormous expense. Even if insurance did cover them, we all know that dental insurance doesn't cover much. I was stoked to be eliminating the, I really should be saving for my kids braces thought from the back of my mind. How does this relate to eating meat? Stay with me here. I know this sounds totally far-fetched, but it's not at all. Best of all, I don't even feed my kids as perfectly as you might expect. I'll talk more about how we really eat, and chances are you can easily replicate this in your own family and see health results that come from solid nutrition. Back to the teeth. When you research nutrition, and I mean really research nutrition by looking at cultures that have really good health, including good dental health without braces, you're gonna see cultures that eat a lot of dairy and meat and avoid processed foods over and over show that people eating a very nutrient dense diet develop broad faces that easily accommodate their adult teeth without crowding and have an appropriate developed jaw for a proper bite. I know what you may be thinking. No way, it's not the meat, it's good genetics. No, not at all. Genetically, everything points to my children needing years of extended orthodontia. This smile here, two years of multiple rounds of braces and dental appliances that strengthened my jaw, widened my jaw, and uncrowded my teeth. Yes, genetically, both sides of the previous generation in my family got braces extensively, and they had them for years to correct major palate malformations. If you look into Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston A. Price, you see example after example of cultures as they're eating traditional diets and avoiding processed food and including lots of nutrient-dense animal foods don't have crowded teeth, don't have dental cavities, even without modern dentistry. Why is this? Because animals grow where agriculture doesn't, but that's a topic for another video. I'll admit that I was skeptical about the teeth thing, though I saw a complete healing of food allergies, eczema, and even lots of symptoms of autism by switching to a meat-heavy, low-carb diet with my kids. It's not that I didn't believe that people on traditional diets didn't need braces and still had beautiful teeth. It's that I didn't believe that I could change something as structural as at how my kids' faces formed and their jaw developed in just a few short years. And as I said, I'm not even that strict with how my kids eat. Eczema seemed like one thing, but could I really make my kid's jaw develop differently than my own did just by making burgers and sneaking butter into everything I could? I really think that that's what did it. How does this work? It works on nutrient density. A nutrient dense diet is a diet that is different than what the standard American diet is or the food pyramid is. Meat, butter, dairy, and eggs all happen to be incredibly nutrient dense. And know what else is awesome? They're also super easy to prepare. The nutrition in meat, butter, dairy, and eggs, as long as none of them are triggering a food allergy, is all highly usable by the body. Here's what we did. When the body has the appropriate amount of nutrients in what Dr. Weston Price called the nutrient activator X, which is kind of an unknown nutrient that's found in animal foods, especially in animal foods, when they are raised on growing, fresh growing green grass. So like milk from the spring, when the grass is fresh growing, um, is found to have a higher amount of this highly nutrient dense food than cream from the milk of the cow in the fall. And so this is Activator X, and really just over and over Weston Price and any traditional culture that lives on a lot of unprocessed food, and the easiest unprocessed food to live on is gonna be meat, dairy and eggs has a really well-developed body. And so this means our midline is well-developed. And so not only is this gonna make our jaw wide enough to have all of our teeth in it, it's gonna make our faces a little bit more broad and it's gonna make childbirth easier because our pelvis is gonna be a little bit more broad as well. Other midline defects that we're seeing is cleft palate or tongue tie or like the sacral dimple. So those are all known to be caused by nutrient deficiencies. And this is another way that nutrient deficiencies can be corrected by eating a lot of nutrient dense, easily absorbable animal foods. So what did we do? I told you that we didn't eat perfectly. And that's what I think is so exciting about this. And I don't want you to get discouraged thinking that because I'm on YouTube talking about food all the time, my children have always eaten perfectly. They've gone to public school. They've had way too many treats in their classrooms. And there's definitely been times in my life when we were moving or whatnot that they ate a lot more frozen 
pizza than I think was necessary. So what did we really do to accommodate these healthy kids that don't need braces? Oh, and by the way, since we're talking about dental health, my boys are not fantastic at brushing their teeth. They have no cavities. My daughter's adult teeth, because we finally got her grinding under control, she ground a lot and had a lot of cavities in her baby teeth, but in her adult teeth, she had stopped grinding by that time. Um, she doesn't have any cavities as well. And this is without fluoride treatments, and this is without me really supervising and really excellent oral hygiene that they should be having anyway, but I'll just be honest, we haven't been the best at it. So here's what we did do. With my first child's pregnancy, my daughter, I ate the standard American diet. <laughs> But I did read nourishing traditions before I started her on solid foods. So I didn't have a good diet during pregnancy, but her first foods were good and she was breastfed until two years. By the time I got pregnant with my son, a year and a half later, I had found raw milk and was eating lots of grass-fed meat while pregnant with Sam. We bought 300 pounds of grass-fed hamburger from an old milk cow with our tax refund that year, and that's what I cooked with. Sam and Hannah, those are my two older kids, they did a lot of low-carb GAPS. So Sam's first foods around a year old was low-carbs GAPS diet food, which is a grain-free, very meat-heavy, we did lots of hamburgers, lots of eggs, GAPS diet. And I did that with them for the most part. Off and on, probably an average of 10% of our lives, we did return to a carb heavy, slightly better than the standard American diet. I never shunned meat and I always included lots of butter in everything, never using like canola oil and never using margarine, always getting as much butter as I could into them. But there's definitely periods in our life where we were eating regular bread, regular tortillas, um, frozen pizza, just stuff catches up to them. And I kind of, on average, I think that was about 10% of our life was just pretty close to the standard American diet, but definitely a little bit more meat and definitely a little bit more butter and less vegetable oils. Child spacing. So while it wasn't exactly a product of planning, I did have five years between Sam and my youngest Levi. Five years is thought to be good spacing, giving the mother's time to replenish nutrients. At this time, I was eating a few treats a month. For the most part, I kept heart keto and gaps along with my children. Why did Sam develop so well, seeing that I got pregnant about a year and a half after Hannah was born? Usually the second child is the largest of the family. Comment down below if you've seen this before, in your own family or in someone else's. This is due to something called a proven placenta. The second child, even if it closely follows the first, gets the benefit of the mother's body having already gone through a pregnancy, so it's not having to figure out the pregnancy as it's growing the child. So this is why a lot of times you'll see that first children are a little bit smaller, second children are relatively large, and then third children start Start to get smaller as well. This is based on mom having a proven placenta or having already done pregnancy before versus the nutrients that are depleted with each pregnancy. So that's what I've done with my family. I feel like that's something that most people can definitely do. My boys have not been keto for the most part. They've kind of been off and on for months at a time, but this isn't something that you have to be super strict with. I don't think to see a benefit. And I was just so excited to see the benefits of how a meat heavy, butter heavy diet has impacted my children's facial development to the point that they don't need braces that I wanted to share with you. Now that I've completely busted the myth that genetics are the reason why you need braces versus not, and if your parents needed braces, you definitely will. If both parents needed braces, the children definitely will. I encourage you to go check out down below. I'll link to Weston Price's book. If you'd like to cook a lot more meat, I will link down below to a carnivore meal plan, which is a very meat heavy meal plan. And I just find that if I load my kids up on meat first, they grow super well, their immune systems are great, their digestion is great. Next, check out how the ultimate environmentally friendly minimalist diet is made up of 100% meat in that video up there. Yes, ignore the propaganda. Meat is good for you, good for your children, and good for the planet. Click up there and I'll show you exactly why.